Hello again, it's good to be back with you. And in this lesson, I'd like to go over gradients. Gradients are just a multi-dimensional version of a derivative. Right? One of the big ideas in mathematics is the operations in mathematics are valid for whatever entity you want to use. Now, it sounds kind of abstract. But think about addition. Can you add integers? Sure, 2 plus 3. Can you add fractions? Sure, 1 half plus 1 third. Can you add decimal numbers? Sure, 2.1 plus 3.7, that works. Can I add vectors? Yes, now I have to follow some rules, but it's still addition. Vectors have to be the same size. Can I add matrices? Yes. Can I add functions? Yes. There's all kinds of entities that I can add, and it's still just addition. The idea of addition is universal, and it's not dependent on, well, it's dependent, but it doesn't change that much depending on what kind of entity you want to use. And derivatives kind of follow that idea. So there's a derivative of a function of one variable, okay, which we've seen before, but there's also derivatives of a function of more than one variable. And those are called gradients. That's just the name for a multi-dimensional derivative. So let's use an example here to make this a little more, or a little less abstract, not more abstract. Um, let's make a function, and this is called the Rosenbrock banana function. Uh, that's I love this. That means there's somebody out there named Rosenbrock whose claim to fame, one of them I suppose, was coming up with this function. Um, it's called a banana function because when you plot it out, I guess some people think it looks like a banana. To me it looks kind of more like a smiley face. But whatever. It's, it's uh, easy to write down, it's easy to work with, and it's got some very interesting properties that make it very useful for evaluating uh, optimization methods and for teaching optimization. You'll see this function, or variations on it really, all over the place. I think it even has a Wikipedia page. So let's, let's start with finding the gradient of this function, the multi-dimensional derivative. Well, first thing you do, how do you write gradient? Gradient, you uh, use this upside down triangle. Okay? That, when you read that, read that out, that's called gradient of f. And the gradient of f, let me move that down a little bit maybe. I can do better than that. There, that's a little better. Okay, there's a gradient of f. Now, it's derivative with respect to x and derivative with respect to y written as a uh, vector. Now, when you see a derivative, nor if say f only had one variable, you'd see it written like that, or maybe like this. Okay? But normally you see it written like that, at least for our purposes here. And what that means is those d's stand for derivative, and they're meant to uh, reference those infinitesimal values we use to define the derivative. But it's a d. It's a, it's a, it's a familiar uh, character. Mathematicians like to write things as compactly and as unambiguously as possible. This d also means that there's only one variable in this function. If f has more than one variable, you now need to specify which variable you're interested in. And then you, you, the D gets stylized. It looks like that. Okay? And this means something different. That this, this backward six looking thing, this, this stylized D, is written is read out as partial. So I read that, I would call that partial F partial X. If you if somebody's reading out an equation to you, that's how you say that. What that partial means is, that backward 6 means, hey, there's more than one variable in here. We're interested in x. So when you write this out, it looks like this. The gradient is, uh, is one element for every variable. And since this is uh, two variables, we'll have two elements. This is a vector. Has magnitude and direction, and we'll use the magnet or the won't use the magnitude. We'll use the direction later in, in other methods. You'll see this again in this class. This is this is something we'll come back to quite a lot. Right now, what is partial f partial x? What is that? What that means is we'll take the derivative with this of, of this function here with respect to x, which means for the purposes of this calculation, y is a constant, right? So we'll treat y as a constant here, and we'll treat x as a constant there. So what's partial f partial x look like? Let's start there. Well, it's 2, 1 minus x to the 2 minus 1 power. That's just 1, so we usually omit that, times the derivative of whatever's in the middle, or whatever's inside those uh, parentheses. Well, the, the derivative of negative f, x with respect to x is minus 1. All right. So let's, let's do the same thing for this other term. 
to the y minus x squared, oops, 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 to the 2 minus 1 power, and I'll leave, leave that alone. Now, times the derivative of whatever's in the middle. Okay, that's going to be minus 2x. And there's term number 1. Term number 2, let's take the derivative of this with respect to y, which means we'll treat x as a constant. Well, there's no y in there, so that derivative of a constant is 0. That term just goes away. And we'll say y minus x squared to the 2 minus 1 power, so it's a 1, we'll just leave that alone, times the derivative of whatever's inside the parentheses. Well, the derivative of that with respect to y is just 1. So that's good, just like it is. Okay. Now we can clean this up a little bit if we want to make sure I've got enough room here. Yeah, we're good. Um, Let's see, at minus 1, I can go 2x minus 1 plus 4x times x squared minus y. That's a slightly tidier version of that. This, I don't think there's any really good way to clean this up. So there's the derivative. So what? That's the, the multidimensional derivative. That's the gradient. Well, in one variable problems, if you wanted to find a maximum or a minimum, you set the derivative equal to zero, that's where the slope was zero, and you solved. Well, that's still true. If you set these two equations, each equal to zero, and solve, you're going to find a point at which the slope in the x direction and the slope in the y direction both equal zero. That's either a maximum, a minimum, or an inflection point. In the case of this function, there's only a minimum. There's no inflection point or maximum. So if you solve, set those two equal to zero and solve for x and for y, you're going to get the minimum, which is a point one, one, x equal one and y equals one. Well, that's nice. Let's try this in MATLAB. OK, here we are back in MATLAB. And we're going to use MATLAB to find the location of the minimum value of the banana function. Let's maybe start by reminding ourselves what the banana function looks like. And I've got all this stuff typed in. You can see over here in the command history, I've been running uh, some sample problems just to make sure I had this figured out before I started the screencast. So if it's OK with you, I'm going to uh, recall some old commands so you don't have to watch me type them back in. Okay, here's the banana function, and just to remind you, I'm using this at xy syntax. MATLAB calls that an anonymous function. I'm not sure why they call it an anonymous function, but that's what they call it, so that's what I'll call it. And I am using this dot notation here just to uh, instruct MATLAB that this is, uh, you, you can use this in uh, vectorized code, that you're, when you push vectors through this function, you evaluate those vectors point by point. So there we are. It's over here now in our workspace. Now this is a function. It's not a list of numbers. So I have to use a plotting function that uh, recognize a function rather than a list of numbers. And the easiest one to use is called easy contour. Just easy. See, and I'm going to hit the up arrow to recall the last time I used it. There it is. And the reason those numbers are there, that's the range in the x direction and that's the range in the y direction. I use those numbers because those are the ones that appear in the appendix B of our book. So give it a second and there it is. Well this is okay. Tell you what, let's do, do what we always do here. Let's uh, move this over and I'll put this over here so we can see it and just move this back. Again, I've got a couple of monitors on my computer, so it's if you have that, it's convenient to put this uh, window on one monitor and put the graphics on the other one, but you don't need to. Um, I'm going to put them on both on the same uh, screen here for the purposes of their screencast. So a couple things I don't like about this. No, there's, there's not enough contour lines. There's a few in there. And I don't have a grid, so let's fix that. There's the grid. Now the contour lines. Contour lines are uh, represent lines of even, you know, of equal values of z uh, out of plane, and just the way this uh, the function defaulted in this case, uh, the those contour lines have a vertical separation of 50. Now 50 watts, I don't know. This doesn't have any physical significance, so it's just 50. It's not 50 feet or 50 meters or something like that. But I want to I want to change that. So what I'm going to do is pick the arrow there and double click on the, on the contour itself. You can see I've got the contours highlighted there. There's a parameter called level step. 
And so rather than 50, I'm going to make it 5. And there's a whole bunch more levels on there. So now it's a little easier to look at. I'll go ahead and turn that off. So it's a little easier to look at now. And it's uh, our minimum is at 1-1. One, one. If you go look in the uh, uh, appendix of the book, it says, shows you that the minimum is at x equal 1 and y equal 1. That's right there. Yeah, let's maybe zoom in on that a little bit. Oops, I'm going to click that. And yeah, maybe right there. That looks good. Kind of straddle it here. There we go. So I've, I've zoomed in now. I don't think it's made any more uh, contours, but uh, it, I've zoomed into the area around the minimum. The minimum would be right there. And it's pretty easy to see that that really could be the minimum. This does actually make intuitive sense. If I put more contours in there, uh, you, you'd see that as the uh, uh, really would be the minimum. So now that we know what it looks like, let's go ahead and write uh, out the solution in MATLAB so we can um, prove mathematically that that's correct. So I'm going to clear that out. Now I haven't cleared the uh, workspace. I just cleared the screen with the CLC command. I'm going to use the function fsolve, F-S-O-L-V-E. It's one of the canned functions in MATLAB. And what it does is it solves uh, coupled systems of algebraic equations. And since the gradient of our objective function is an algebraic equation, we'll set both, both terms of that equal to zero and solve. F solve will work fine. In order to do this, um, there's a couple of ways. In MATLAB, there's a, several ways to do anything. And depending on how much syntax you want to use or want to learn, the answer can be pretty compact. Um, rather than try to... Uh, show you a bunch of non-intuitive kind of out there syntax, I decided to use a more straightforward way of, of uh, calling the fsolve function. And here's what, I'm, what I decided to do. This is, this is from straight out of the help files. I wrote a little m file called grad underscore ex. Okay, and so all I would all I did is I went over here and I typed edit space grad underscore ex and hit return. It asked me, uh, there's no file by that name exists, would you like to, to create one? I said yes, and I typed in these commands right here. So just so you know what you're looking at, when I typed in the word function, that, that text turned blue automatically. That's the editor's way of telling me that I recognize this as a MATLAB function. This isn't a variable or anything. So grad f right there is the name of the uh, variable I'm using to define the objective function. Grad underscore ex is the name of the uh, m file I'm using. And x, that's the list of variables I'm going to use. See all those x's show up there? All my variables are going to be a vector of x's. x1, x2, x3. So anywhere I saw x in the original uh, definition of the gradient, I, that's x1. y now corresponds to x2. It's probably possible to put x and y in there just because it's possible to do just about anything in MATLAB. But this is the tidiest way to do it. And it's, it's the shortest amount of typing and it's probably the easiest to understand. So if you replace x sub 1 with x and x sub 2 with y, you'll see this is exactly the gradient that uh, we used before. Now just just for just to show you what happens, I'm going to make a tiniest modification. I'm going to get rid of that space. See how that save button went from gray to blue? That's actually, for those of you who don't remember, that's what the old three and a half inch floppy disks look like. That's why it's there. Um, so what's in memory or over here is not the most recent version of this file. The most recent version of this file lives in the editor, but it hasn't been saved to the disk yet. So if I say save, now that file over there is this one. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'll move this off the screen. I, unfortunately, I can't call that function directly from the um, command window, but just about. I'm going to make another anonymous function called fn, and I'm going to call it, I, and before I had one called grad underscore b, so I'm going to modify that and make grad underscore ex. Now what that means is I'm, I'm going to have an uh, anonymous function called fn that uses grad ex, that file I just wrote. In fact, let me put it back over here so we can we can look at it if we want to. I'll just tuck it right in there. Um, and when I shrunk it down, I lost some of those, those uh, 
parts in the toolbar up there, but if I expand it back out, you'll see them again. But there's there's our function that we used. We're going to use, and there's that that's its name right there. So if I hit enter, now I've got an uh, anonymous function named fn, and that fn points to that right there. So I've got the link in the the link to my m file in place. Last thing I need to do is type in the command f solve, and it just starts with f s o and I'll hit the up arrow so to get that bring that back up on the screen so there's FN this is just a starting point I have to give it two numbers to define a starting point in the XY plane there I just decided to give it 0 0 I could use anything but 0 0 is fine probably don't want to give it 1 1 because that's the answer I want to make it look at least a little bit hit return and there it is okay it gives me some basically commentary on what it was doing there's the answer one one so that's exactly the answer that's in the book and if you were to solve the problem analytically actually back substitute and grind through all the algebra you'd also get the same answer so there we are now we know what a gradient is we know how to calculate one from an objective function and we know how to set the gradient equal to zero and solve in MATLAB Hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.